Hello, everybody. I am Nico. I am the creator of the uh, fan project Mavericks uh, for Mega Man X. And today I'm going to show you my uh, process of how I created uh, those little animated movies. Um, this will be part one of uh, a multiple part series because the whole thing would be too long uh, to watch in one sitting would be probably a few hours or so. So uh, there will be smaller parts so it's easier to watch and probably not that boring. Uh, this will be a, a time-lapse uh, video series, uh, but I will be commenting on it so uh, you get all the insights of how I created what and why and what my thinking process was. And hopefully you'll get a better picture of what went through my head to create this uh, whole project. And uh, yeah, this part will be uh, mainly focusing on um, modeling the character, especially the upper part of his um, of his body. Uh, and uh, yeah, I would say let's get started. So um, <clears throat> yeah, as you see here, um, everything started with a sketch. Unfortunately, I didn't record the sketching process. But I took the original design and I drew over it to um, to come up with ideas and first of all to have an idea how it should look like. So as you see, I'm taking the original design uh, model and um, shortly changing it bit by bit. And here I'm changing the uh, the beak first. I chose to start with it because I had a certain idea of how I wanted it to look like. And on the right side you see my sketch, how roughly I sketched some ideas and what I wanted it to be, a little bit here and there, but very rough. In the process itself of modeling, I came up with new ideas and I saw what is possible, what's not. So there you see it, um, I made a beak a little bit more like, had some, some sharper edges and some bolts in it, so it looks more metallic. And uh, my first idea with the helmet was to make it like a pilot's helmet. So you see it a little bit on the, on the drawing with the, with the sides here, with, with the straps uh, that go to the mask basically of a pilot. I want it to be uh, reminiscent of this, uh, but during the process it changed a little bit. As you will see maybe um, yeah so uh, that's basically these are like soft parts of a helmet that I actually still took and and kept in the in the final final design uh, but overall I just tried to add some detail um, like little little fan or um, I'm not sure like a little grid um, so yeah, that's that's basically the process, uh, how I started overall, just taking the original design and enhancing it a little bit here and there. Uh, here you can see I, I'm adding the mask basically, um, because this this part actually looked a little bit boring, so I wanted to make it more like a like a helmet type. That's why I'm creating those stripes uh, next to the beak uh, at the sides, Put some little buttons. And uh, yeah, so that was that was the original idea for it. Um, overall, uh, I tried to make it more not not too exaggerated like the original design. So that's why um, I um, I deleted those those little spikes on the side. Yeah, the eyes the eyes changed overall uh, over the course of the uh, designing process. First, I just made some some little added some little details, but um, this will change as you will see. Uh, by the way, this is a three part series just for the modeling of the of the character. So this is the first part that's focusing on the upper part uh, upper part of the body, so arms, torso, and uh, and the head. And uh, yeah, there will be some more parts. I, I will get into that maybe later. Um, overall, it will be maybe a six part series. I'm not sure. I'm still in the process, so we'll see. Yeah, those, those parts uh, at the eyes, uh, that was just super improvised. I didn't know what, what to do, uh, what this should actually be, but um, I just had it in my head. I tried it out and it actually stuck to the final, final uh, design. So I'm happy with that, definitely. 
yeah, next part. So the head was kind of already, already pretty good. So I was happy with it. I'm, I'm sure uh, not much happened to the, to the uh, head anymore. But as you see on the right side, um, I took some inspiration from, from airplanes. The whole, the whole um, designing process was that I want to use like airplane and aviation uh, parts and design ideas from from this 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 sector basically so um that's why i have some reference images from from airplanes and from jets from from aviation overall so uh that's why you see um, those images here and there but overall um i still had during the whole process i have another modern monitor with reference images so sometimes when you see there is a little pause you will see that um, I probably looked at the references and uh, figure out how to translate it to the model yeah but overall um, yeah I'm uh, modeling right now the arms adding some details so as you see also in the reference image I took some some uh, ideas from uh, like jet uh, jet engines Jet engines uh, will become a bigger part on the on the arm cannon, so that this will be uh, fun. And this was also fun to model, but this one is, was just uh, to adding some some like uh, little fans and some um, details here and there to make it look a little bit like a jet engine or like an airplane part that has little little uh, blades here and there. And as you can see, uh, I actually uh, redesigned the, the the hand a little bit. I wasn't I wasn't really um, happy with the with the uh, first sketch, so I just improvised a little bit, tried some things here and there. And there you can see that I actually wanted to make it a little bit more not just rounded, but uh, have some little edges there to make it look like a I don't know like a shield shield type of um, uh, design. So I chose, <clears throat> I chose this one. Uh, yeah, overall I added some details to the hand. I wanted to make it a little bit more, not like soft and rounded. It uh, had to have more edges. Uh, also a little bit inspiration from the um, from the uh, design of the uh, jet engine. So uh, a little bit more more circles, um, little fins that you see here and there. So um, that was the overall idea of, of the hand. Bolts, of course, you need to add more bolts to, to make it more like rough and metallic. Um, I didn't want to make the overall design too sci-fi, so too sleek, too, uh, too much. Um, uh, yeah, too, too sci-fi. It, it, it should look more grounded and uh, more uh, like it could uh, be in our world so made out of realistic metallic parts yeah so there i am i'm adding kind of like a canister or motor electro motor maybe i'm not sure what this is supposed to be there there, there are not like specific ideas okay this is what it is it just i thought it looked cool i wanted to have a circle shape still um uh with the um, uh, with the with the arm because there is the circle thing so I um, just wanted to make have, have some kind of cylinder there uh, so again adding some details uh, with the arm again sketching again a little bit and uh, yeah for the arm cannon I actually uh, wanted to make it damaged so open so there you see I actually took a um, like a slice of a uh, airplane engine and I um, take it as a took it as a template to uh, build the inside of his arm can. His arm can should look similar to to like an open engine. Uh, so that was a cool cool idea that I had. So there you see it. I just took it, just drew a little bit, um, doodled a little uh, engine part, um, and there you see it up in top top right corner that I. That's my drawing, basically. And then uh, I took it as a template and uh, built the inside. So just little complicated stuff, some circle parts uh, here and there. You can see it from um, 
here you can uh, the, these are supposed to be the orange parts on his cannon um, I thought okay this will look cool like some copper parts or I don't know exactly it just had to look cool so yeah uh, also a little like a grid like a cage I wanted to show that it has layers overall so the arm can has different layers and one of them is uh, like a cage that is also damaged so I added this also inside there is like a core uh, like a little glowing core uh, which is like the power source of the, of the arm cannon so uh, that was the idea and um, yeah this is where I uh, creating the core it has to look like like this power source also with some some uh, some uh, shapes here and there some layers uh, this was um, inspired by like a uh, like the CERN Hadron Collider or um, other like laser um, ideas from movies basically uh, so yeah that was that was that they're um, creating the cage for for the whole core uh, thing so I just knew okay it, it that's the power source of his weapon so it has to look like super cool and everything uh, that's a very important part so I think yeah, I got it this grid overall that's that's the part that I subtracted from from the cannon from the outer shell so that it's cut out basically um, yeah here I'm, I'm adding again more details here and there to the engine so that it looks more enginey I would say there you go. Um, the connection between the arm and the uh, the cannon should look right, and that's the outer shell again. So um, um, now I'm creating a line where the where the rip part should be. So I just basically took the knife tool, and uh, as you see here, uh, I just cut out some random parts. I just knew that it should go slimmer to to the to uh, like his elbow but open up to to where the cannon is uh, where the start of the cannon is so that's why how i how i drew uh, this part and then i just deleted it there you see it again again with the knife so that was just a random random decision to make it oh, okay how much of the inside should be visible how much should be uh, not visible how much how many tear tear or torn parts should there be so layer by layer I just cut out stuff and then um, as you see the final um, the final uh, view sh looks like many different damaged layers uh, together in one you can see already here a little bit yeah also the outer shell it it's made of like little rectangular parts so i deleted those here and there and uh, yeah overall i'm just creating and choosing where where the damage should be so i'm just basically cutting holes ran uh, semi-randomly i try to make it a little bit more random overall as you see here um, also where the cannon is ripped apart the, the parts should also be like bent outside that's what I was doing there so it's um, it's like ripped open so those parts s stick outside yeah also some some discs there like a like some hard drives as you see uh, on the top left corner, I used some materials from the uh, Blender Kit, I believe it's called. Uh, they have really cool metallic materials, so I used those for, especially for the copper. And overall, I just now I'm trying to choose a, a certain material for for the cannon. I wasn't really sure how how it should look, so I was. Um, experimenting with it a little bit to make it more procedural or not i wasn't sure so these were the first first tries but i'm i'm pretty sure in the end i chose a different um different uh, material for for the for the cannon i knew i just knew uh, it had to be similar to the original design which has i think three three stripes basically of, of colors light blue blue and gray i believe I should check this, but I'm 
too lazy now. Uh, yeah, so this is the uh, part where I where I um, am creating the glow on the ripped side or the torn side. Also, a little bit more uh, details. Oh, creating the core, the, the glowing core that it's actually um, connected to to like a little tube. But here you, you see I actually drew the the uh, glowing part uh, by hand. So um, maybe we'll see that soon. Yeah, I'm still. Um, yeah, there I do. So I actually drew the the glow. It's it's uh, defining where the other material should be. So the glowing, I created glowing material and the metallic material, and then I drew with like a paintbrush where the glowing part should be so that that was the process and then you have this defined and then you can uh, you can change the glow with just one slider basically so yeah uh, just a little, little bit because the, the tear actually changed a little bit here and there so i had to adjust uh, the the drawn part also yeah i'm still working on the on the material the materials were a little bit tricky because i at this point i didn't know how i wanted it to look i just knew it, it shouldn't be too metallic too shiny it has to be a little bit more like painted like it was a uh, painted metal but a little bit damaged so that was the idea yeah, the the shoulder pads were a little bit tricky because through the whole process I didn't know what I wanted. I wanted to add detail, I wanted to make some ridges, make it a little bit metallic, but I also knew that it has to move also, which in the end, uh, in the final movie, it's barely moving, so that was a little bit of a waste of time. Uh, yeah, the rib cage or the, the, the chest, chest part, um, that was actually fun because I uh as you see in the drawing um i knew exactly what i wanted i wanted to have like a like a grid uh going from from his his um, middle to to the underside so i created a little um like a little grill basically for for airflow that was the idea and uh, yeah there i'm creating those, those little plates Yeah, just some adjustment here and there, but overall the work are pretty fine. So uh, I was pretty happy with it. Uh, there weren't too too many too many problems with it. So yeah, now the chest part also should have like a grid, just just to have more detail and more um, be more sophisticated and not just like this rounded rounded chest. Yeah, again with the with the shoulder pads, um, I kept coming back to them because I wasn't happy. So I added some stuff, some stuff in there. Also here, adding details, some little squares, some little lines. Uh, that always helps to to make it more uh, realistic. But in the end, I learned that. I shouldn't just take one piece and add detail. Uh, it's better to use multiple pieces to put one thing together because in real life, you barely have any like one giant piece that is then used for something. Usually when, it's com when it comes to mechanics or mechanical things, these are made out of different solid parts that are welded, bolted or screwed together. And that's what I'm going to do later on uh, in the video, I, th I believe, uh, with uh, the, his uh, other parts, but also with the uh, next episodes. I'm learning. I'm learning. So, yeah. Also, uh, that's what I did uh, now with this with this collar. Uh, these are two parts, but I wanted to add like clamps. So that's uh, what you see here. Not that they just like stick together, but there are actually like clamps that that hold the upper part together so there there will be some, some little screws or bolts i wanted to make like the interaction between two parts is actually a little bit more realistic that they uh, fit together but uh, in a more visible way not just they that they just fit and that's it so that's what i'm doing here right now 
adding some some overlapping over overlapping uh, parts basically. Yeah, they're they're oh now like some kind of screws or bolt um, uh, places. This, this was already enough. Again, adding some ridges always a good thing uh, to add detail. And as you see, I always kept coming back to the hand and because I wasn't so happy about it. Changing here and there. Uh, the helmet also, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, working now on the more on the materials and also to adding um, like torn uh, material on the on the uh, on the sides and on the on the corners because they're that these are the parts that where uh, metal or uh, materials wear out uh, the first so um, you will see like uh, those those black lines they basically define where a corner is and that's I'm using that to add another material where there is some wear so there you see it and to make it a little bit more random you can add another mask that that defines where it should be like torn yeah working with the materials i learned a lot actually uh, especially with metallic materials uh, which i will be using in the future episodes so uh, this will be fun i learned a lot about using using shaders and uh, especially metallic um, metallic materials yeah so uh, also always adding more details yeah this will be that the, now the stomach part this was fairly easy because uh, in blender you can you can uh, you have many possibilities to just duplicate one like one ring and make it bigger and it moves accordingly to the body so this is um, this was wasn't that that difficult I could just move one part and all the others moved with it also again with the shaders adding some worn and worn out parts you can see where where there's a corner it's it's more torn on the side and also like one i just wanted to make one piece like really like shredded yeah, I redesigned the, the chest plate a little bit in the middle. And um, yeah, it looked more like a, like a grill from like a 50s car maybe, but I like that idea. So I just went with it. You can see it. I think underneath there is also like another grid. Yeah, this way it, it looks a little bit more like engine, engine uh, kind of thing. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. That's the upper body uh, of the of the model. So uh, I hope you liked it. Uh, in the next part, part two, we will be focusing, I believe, on the hand. Oh yeah, the, the hand was a big thing. That's why I dedicated a whole whole uh, part to the hand, but also the legs. So uh, next part will be hands and legs. So the model will be finished, except for the wings. There will be part three just for the wings because they, woof, uh, they were a whole uh, chapter of its own. <laughs> so look forward to that. Uh, well, thank you very much for, for watching. If you're interested to see uh, more of it, um, stay tuned. Maybe subscribe to the channel. You know the drill. Subscribe and like and uh, share definitely if you like this. And uh, we will see you next time. If you have any questions, drop them in comments. Maybe I will um, answer them as soon as possible. No, maybe I will definitely answer them. And uh, all right. Thanks, everyone. And see you with the next episode. Bye.